uh, with those felonies on, on their background, uh, juveniles are not able to have any employment because of their age or they're just not jobs that's willing to give them a chance or to try them out. Uh, when we look at the economics, most uh, in the black community, not many of them is making more than minimum wage uh, because of the educational background of where they don't have a great education. When we look at a lot of schools in our black community, especially here in Nashville, their, their test scores are so much lower than schools that are outside of the demographic of where we live at in the uh, poverty uh, places in Nashville that we are. And the personal issue that I see is that because of the parents and what they are accustomed to, what they have been taught, what, what they have gone through in their lives, they're teaching their kids the same thing. So uh, they, they're just prone to what they've been taught, what they see, uh, their environment, and uh, is calling, causing a dilemma with our black males because they're becoming what their environment is. And uh, I just believe if, if we had a better economical system for our black community with, with great educational uh, background there to support uh, them to be able to get their economical ways together. I think the, p the personal problem with the parenting and the child would be totally different, but that's what we deal with a lot of times. Mm -hmm. We find that the parents are not uh, as involved and engaged in their life as they should be. We care more for the kids than they do. They drop them off at the front door, mm -hmm. they leave them. They don't come inside to see what the program is about. Uh, a lot of times they might not even drop them off. They give them a little bit of bus fare mm -hmm. and tell them to get there the best way they can. So uh, I, I think that there's a big overall picture that we can't just uh, uh, key in on one point uh, dealing with the uh, dilemma with our young black males in America. You know, uh, Bishop Campbell, uh, what I'd like to understand, and perhaps you might be able to give us some information in reference to this, do you think it would be cost effective for uh, our governmental officials to provide our young men and women with some kind of employment instead of simply refusing to do anything in that direction? Do you think that that would help us out? It would help us greatly. You know, uh, being in the faith-based community, we have a saying of, of uh, what we say is, the idle mind is the devil's workshop. And I believe that these young uh, uh, teenagers, our juveniles had an opportunity of employment, that it would teach them leadership, teach them responsibility, uh, uh, give them a great reference, a great start in their life to show them that you have to work for what you want and uh, not go out and take it from somebody else or, or, or selling to destroy somebody else's life to be able to benefit your own pocket. What about you, uh, Brother Waller? Dr. Haney, what I know about the, uh, the youth and people as a whole in our community, there's a trap. And what happens when a trap is set for you, you don't see the trap. Mm -hmm. And once you're captured into the trap, such as I was, mm -hmm. I didn't even know I was in a trap mm -hmm. because the things that I was trapped in was attractive. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful of what we do in front of others. Mm -hmm. People were doing things that had my attention mm -hmm. and it caused me to desire to be into what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And after doing so, and then got captured, it was like, this is a wonderful thing. I'm getting high, I'm getting money. I understand the language, but it's one thing that I didn't know. And that is that the trap was so powerful that once you get in it, there's an enemy and you have to do his will. And I was that person that came to my senses as the word of God says, after you had come to your senses and escaped the snare, the trap of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So once a person is trapped, they're going to do his will. Mm -hmm. Now what we have to do is bring forth great information that's so powerful that they would miss the trap. Mm -hmm. Now after I was released from the bondage that I was in, I was told mm -hmm. to go back to my community in which I had made so effective mm -hmm. in the unrighteous path that people followed me, admired what I was doing, but I was in a trap. Mm -hmm. So I called so many people to be in a trap with me and he's sending me right back out there mm -hmm. to get the people that's still out there out of the trap. Sure. And that's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I've wrote, written a book that's entitled Still High, mm -hmm. one of the greatest books that I think that could help our communities mm -hmm. and get people back into the swing of mm -hmm. what we really need. And that's my desire. And that's why I'm out in the streets. Uh, mm -hmm. New Way Outreach Ministry is a ministry that reaches out. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be inside of the building. I'm outside where the people are. 
that's hurting, that's crying for help. And my encouragement to the people that's in the church, come out of the building. Mm -hmm. You never know. The and and so the idea of the book, Still High, yeah. is to indicate that you are still high, but yeah. you're high on something mm -hmm. outside yeah. of what uh, yeah. you were generally high on. Yeah. And the experience is greater, yeah. greater. with being still high yeah. than it was during the earlier parts of your situation. Is that what you're saying? In that's what I'm to saying. That? And don't call shit dying mm -hmm. to keep this high once you learn about it. And it has so much information that the same enemy that captured me don't want nobody to get this book. Mm -hmm. and this book been out since 2013. And I believe Nashville should be flooded with the book. Mm -hmm. If you want to see a difference, you never know until you try it. And, and, and I think some of the problems that we're talking about here are not problems that are limited <clears throat> in terms of the African-American experience and the African-American male, mm -hmm. because uh, in a real sense, getting high in the other sense is a national problem now, which yes, is to yes. say that more people are dying of oh, yeah. cocaine and et cetera oh, than yeah. in automobile accidents and et cetera. And so I think what oh, you yeah. have there as a book mm -hmm. uh, is something that is very, very valuable and needed yes. in terms of the kind of situations that we find. Not African-American males, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but African-Americans, yeah. other groups and all of them Correct. find the same problems, the same challenges and et cetera. Yeah. And so what we're going to do, uh, Robert Walker, we're going to take this.